it's not enough to look at something. It's necessary to look through eyes that want to see and that believe in what they see. That's Galileo Galilei's statement. And as most of you know, Galileo was the first scientist to conceive the telescope as an announcement of our senses. Today, thanks to new technology, we can enhance the user vision even further by combining real and virtual objects in an interactive way. Welcome everybody to the fifth meetup of AWI Night Florence. Today, we are proud to introduce XR glasses for enterprise, an event showing how both AR and VR glasses can be applied to the industry sector. My name is Cecilia Lasciarfari, co-founder of area6dof.com, creative technologist, aspiring journalist, and organizer of a Night Florence event. Augmented and virtual reality simplify and support industrial process. It's possible, for instance, to receive remote assistance thanks to AR smart glasses, which enable workers to easily access data and information directly in their field of view. Can design and quality coexist in safety glasses for the industry which exploit augmented reality? How can companies choose which is the best XR technology to apply to their sector? And how can it be integrated into existing production process? It's my pleasure to welcome three speakers with great experience in AR VR glasses for enterprise use that can answer these and many other questions. Mauro Rubin, CEO and founder of JoinPad, AI, AR expert for Two Solding in Italy. Heitor Bravi, Sales and Partnership Director for Southern Europe and LATAM at Pico Interactive. Alessio De Gaetano, Sales Director at iTech Lab, Univet Group. But uh, now, let's go. I'm happy to introduce my co-organizer, Anthony Vitillo. Hi, Anthony. As always, it's a pleasure to have you here. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks, Cecilia, for the introduction. And thanks to one of you that have joined this AWNI Florence. And thanks for all these amazing speakers that we have today. Uh, so I'm Anthony Vitillo. I'm a VR, a VR developer and also a blogger. Someone knows me as the Scarred Ghost. And I love to be inside this community in which actually I'm very happy to organize these events to discuss about the latest news about the RMBR. So before leaving the world, the leaving the, the world to the to the speakers that have something more interesting to say than me, I want to invite every one of you to be very active in the in the chat, to speak with the others, to interact and also with the speakers to present questions because the great thing of doing this event is the interactivity, because otherwise we can just publish a video and it will be okay. So let's all be active in the chat. Let the, uh, let's present yourself to everyone, uh, ask questions, and create a bit of buzz and have fun together. So Cecilia, let's introduce the first speaker. And now I'm happy to introduce Mauro Rubin, CEO and founder of JoinPad, a AR expert for two holdings in Italy. Mauro introduces augmenting worker potential in the industrial sector. Welcome, Mauro. It's a pleasure to have you here. Hi, everyone. I'm Mauro Rubin, CEO founder. Thanks for uh, the organizer to invite me in this uh, uh, super cool event uh, about uh, smart glasses and augmented reality. I'm a CEO and founder of JoinPad, and um, our goal uh, is uh, is uh, creating uh, uh, the next uh, generation platform to um, improve the um, industrial process, um, enhancing real time knowledge transfer from uh, artificial intelligence uh, to uh, humans. We are active um, in uh, this uh, industrial sector since uh, the 2010, and we have uh, several. Uh, uh, business partner across all the globe. We are talking with uh, Samsung, PwC, Insight, LL Vision, and many others uh, business uh, uh, partners. Uh, we are based in uh, Milan, which is uh, our HQ, but we have um, several offices uh, across all the globe. Dallas in US, uh, Ningbo and Shanghai in China as well. Um, let's talk about augmented reality. Uh, as um, most of you guys know, augmented reality is a technology that provided the user 
with the most relevant information about anything in real time. In JoinPad, uh, uh, we work following uh, this direction, uh, apply this technology to industrial processes uh, since 2011 with augmented uh, XP, which was uh, our first, uh, uh, let me say, uh, our first uh, product uh, in, uh, in the maintenance uh, fields. Um, it, it was quite a uh, raw uh, solution, but uh, you know, it, it happens uh, 10 years ago and we are able to recognize an object and provide the re relevant information in real time to the, to the user. And uh, after uh, 10 years, yeah, we are still here uh, talking about uh, augmented reality, which, which means you know, we were in the right field and uh, in, the, in, the, in the right uh, uh, situation. So we are happy to, um, to be here today and talking about uh, how we are augmenting the worker potential to help him to go behind his own skill. And we have to start uh, from uh, the industrial sector. Uh, industrial sector is a driving uh, uh, innovation. Um, we are talking about uh, a huge market. In the, um, 2024, uh, 25, uh, the global market about augmented reality and virtual reality will be very close to $600 billion across all the globe. And the industrial field move this re revolution, do this, this market uh, through the most innovative technology. We can see um, we, several, uh, several times we hear the, the topic about the industry 4.0, um, which represent um, the smart factory. Smart factory is a, an ecosystem of uh, interconnected machine technologies and people able to improve uh, uh, process thanks to automation and self-automatization. Uh, uh, yesterday, uh, the paradigm was uh, the user had to access a database to get the necessary information. We are talking about uh, to do maintenance inspection, uh, um, how to fix a problem uh, in the in the in in a factory, for example, but today the user can receive the, the necessary information from surrounding elements uh, as a object, places, people, and sensor. In JoinPad, our goal is um, uh, changing the the field of view, the user field of view, from this to this one, and uh, to do that, we. Um, Created a new paradigm called the augmented worker, uh, which is composed by human factor, such as uh, knowledge, process, uh, collaboration, uh, and the technologies uh, like uh, or artificial intelligence, augmented reality, and sensor. Um, to implement an augmented reality platform in a, in a in a in a smart factory in a new uh, industrial environment, um, you can uh, start with uh, a step-by-step -step, uh, uh, process. Uh, the easy, easiest uh, mm, step to do is using uh, a, a knowledge sharing and transfer through the virtual annotation, uh, like uh, this uh, kind of uh, uh, product. Um, this application is called the Smart Assistance uh, Able uh, can allow the user to receive support. Meanwhile, he is trying to fix a problem uh, in uh, in uh, his uh, environment um, with uh, a remote expert who can uh, um, um, include and had the virtual object uh, anchored to the real one. In the in the during the, mm, the pandemic, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, uh, we registered um, an increase about uh, the smart assistance request, uh, like a 980% compared to the previous year. 
And um, this means that uh, a lot of uh, companies uh, which are not uh, able to be connected with, uh, uh, in a physically with uh, their customer started to use uh, this kind of uh, uh, technology to allow the, 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 the company to, to follow the customer, to support the customer remotely. But uh, this, is not, this is just at the beginning because um, companies are still uh, interested in uh, overlay information about uh, object recognition and work procedure. So imagine that you have uh, uh, um, a machinery in front of you and that you don't have the right skills to, to fix a problem or uh, complete a procedure. Um, this technology, augmented reality application for enterprise are able to recognize the object and provide you the right information in the right moment. Um, it can work on, uh, on smart glasses, of course, but uh, it can work even on, uh, on, uh, on a common smartphone. So it's, uh, it's very easy to simplify the, the process to uh, acquire a new, a new skill about everything. So instead to read 100 pages about uh, um, PDF, about uh, instruction, you have just a look at, uh, at, at the object and, uh, and getting the, the right information in the right moment. But that is uh, just, uh, as, I, as I told you, just at the beginning, because the augmented reality uh, allow us to get the real time data just uh, look at uh, a common object. So as you can see here, uh, we are able to recognize an object and the system is smart enough to, re to ask to the, the big data repository to represent the data through a dashboard for a, a easy reading about uh, what is, uh, is doing, what is happening behind that machine. That is uh, what we did, for example, in, uh, in China for, a, for um, a huge manufacturing uh, company, um, a huge manufacturing player in the, in, in the south of the China. Um, using uh, uh, smart glasses and uh, uh, augmented reality, we are able to connect the whole uh, production line and getting the, in real time uh, if uh, there is uh, a component who need uh, maintenance or in uh, uh, a, a, a check, a simply check to, to understand if that component is working in, in, the, right, uh, uh, in, the, right, uh, in the right way. So, is um, augmented reality help us to understanding the, the world in a different way. Um, as you can see here, artificial intelligence uh, can start in, in the, started in, in, the, in the last few years to um, include its, its cap capability in the augmented reality field. So as you can see here, this is just a projection and connected to a camera. And the, the artificial intelligence is smart enough to recognize not just the single object, but even the logic between the two different objects, providing the right information to the, to the user about how assembling the object. For this reason, we create uh, the, a, new, a new word called uh, co-AI, it means uh, collaborative artificial intelligence. is uh, an artificial intelligence uh, who can uh, uh, partner up with uh, a new generation of co-work. Um, the same algorithm uh, installed on uh, smart glasses works uh, like uh, um, a virtual assistants. So the virtual assistant is able to understand the context and say, that, okay, you need a toolbox and you need the, the, the right tool. And when you pick up uh, uh, the, the wrong one, he is able to, to say, okay, you have to change it and they use the, the right one. 
in this way, I can uh, um, I can work on uh, uh, on, on several processes, even if I have not the right competence uh, uh, to do that. So in uh, in uh, in a while, I can be I can become an expert about the several process, and it it impacts uh, heavily in uh, in the, in the industrial fields. We can see several. Uh, benefit about uh, all this kind of, uh, of platform. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, um, there is a, um, a travel expenses reduction because you are not moving um, people, but you are moving just the knowledge. And uh, there is a, an, 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 an improvement about the, the communication between teams and the reduction about errors because um, artificial intelligence can support you uh, on, uh, on several decisions. And you can do uh, training uh, remote session as well, then simplifying the digital transformation. This is not the just, this is not the future, but that is the past, definitely, because we already sold this, um, this um, uh, system to several company uh, across all the globe. And we strongly, thinks that uh, the, the um, co-AI represented the present. The first step to make knowledge uh, a commodity. This is a, a new approach extending the human being ability to cope with the current emergency. So I, we are used to say that the co-AI is a revolution. Uh, we will move from automatic muscle to augmented the brain. So that's it. Uh, is my presentation. Thank you very much for uh, uh, for inviting me in, in this amazing uh, event. Then uh, I move the I I, I quit the stage and uh, and uh, pass the, the the word to to Anthony and Cecilia. Thank you. Thank you, Mauro. And now let's welcome our next presenter, Alessio De Gaetano, Sales Director of iTech Lab Univet Group. Alessio introduces Visionaire, the one and only augmented reality safety glasses. Welcome, Alessio. It's a pleasure to have you here. Hello, Cecilia. Hello, everyone. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity you gave us. Uh, I'm also happy to see so many people. Uh, I hope everybody can hear me properly and, and see also my screen. So uh, what we are going to discuss now, what I'm going to, to tell you about is something new, something a bit different from uh, what I used to see nowadays in the market talking about augmented reality and smart glasses devices. Uh, I will start with a step, a simple step. I'm sure that everyone here knows already what I'm uh, presenting at the moment, this slide, but just to be sure to, to start from, the, from a common point, from a shared point. Uh, as you know, this is the spectrum, or rather to, to better say, uh, the continuum between reality and virtual world. And we position augmented reality here. So typically we can see 100% uh, of the real world around the operator, our, uh, around our cells. And on this, there is an additional layer of electronic uh, digital data. But, but if we focus inside augmented reality, we could find some subfields in some way. So uh, augmented reality is indeed something we are very used already. As Mauro was saying, it's, it's already the word of today. We are used to see it basically daily in our lives. We start from the uh, head-up displays in our cars, our phones, uh, navigation systems, and so on. Then there are some uh, more complex and uh, integrated solutions, like I just put some examples of interior design and uh, surgery or medical application in which there's a need of higher level of, uh, of details and immersion compared to what we use every day. Uh, now, this can be divided, but as you see, it's not a, a straight division, but it's always a continuum uh, of solution. 
between assisted reality uh, and with this this um, word, this sentence, we identify something more similar to head up, head up displays and mixed reality when we go towards the virtual world, meaning that in this case, we put 3D models integrated in the real world. So today we are going to talk of a, a safety glasses, which is also smart glasses, and it's Visioner. And Visioner puts itself here. So we are at the very beginning of the spectrum that we have just seen. This already gives you an idea of where we are, we are going. Uh, now, what is Visioner? As Cecilia was saying during the introduction, Visioner is the first and so far the only augmented reality safety glasses. What does it mean? Of course, it's a pair of glasses. Univet is my company. We make glasses since 25 years ago. So we know what a pair of glasses has to be uh, in terms of uh, comfort, in terms of design, in terms of fitting. Uh, so we start the other way around compared to most of the other players who typically starts from the technology and try to put the technology on, on the face. Then there is the, uh, the topic of safety. And this, of course, has to be stressed a lot in our case because uh, I would like to, to take the, the occasion to answer a little bit on um, one of the questions came in, coming from the, from the crowd, from the, from the listeners, uh, which was why AR or more in general XR, so extended reality devices, didn't break in uh, in the industrial world uh, yet, at least, even if the interest is there and we all know this. Well, I think, and Univet thinks that one of the reasons is this. Typically, when you have to equip uh, a full department, so you, you have the plan to make a full deployment of a new technology, at a certain moment, sooner or later, you will have to face a risk assessment. So the safety manager will need to assess the level of risk of a new technology so that he will be able to justify the new equipment for a large crowd of, uh, of operators. Uh, well, there's no uh, AR or XR safety device yet. Visionary is the first one. So we hope, <laughs> and the first results are confirmed in this, uh, that in this way, we at least remove one of the main obstacles for full deployment of these devices in the industry. The third point, of course, is the technology augmented reality. In our case, we wanted to focus on the usability. So rather than asking from the technology the best level of resolution, the best level of immersivity, uh, we, wanted, we wanted to have something which could be practical and could be used in any um, environment. So we needed a uh, high level of brightness. We needed high level of transmittance. So the device had to be transparent as much as possible. And so we identified the best technology in this sense. There's no device in the market today which could be compared in terms of transparency and in terms of brightness uh, compared to ours. So we start from these points and then we go ahead and discover that basically what you see is Visioner, I have also one here uh, to answer your question if you want, is basically a, a pair of safety glasses. Whoever in the industry is already used to PPEs, so to protection uh, equipment, and is used to uh, wearing safety glasses will not find any difference. It's the uh, lightest device in the market, is the less uh, invasive in terms of comfort. It can be adjusted to any physiognomy of, of your face, Asian, Western, uh, Eastern, no problem. It can be worn even over your prescription glasses. So it's what we call over spectacles. So it's born to be used nearly from anyone in the, in the field. Uh, then, of course, we wanted also to be sure that it could be used in the best way from the point of view of sharing the product. We know, especially now with COVID, unfortunately, 
We know that hygiene is a topic, but not only that, because imagine if uh, uh, I have, for example, two shifts of uh, workers in the same uh, department, in the same production line, for example. So uh, this means that if I have two shifts, I need two glasses for the same job. Well, that's not entirely true because as you can see, we can separate the optical module from the frame of the glasses in order to uh, ensure that the, the, the frame itself can stay as personal equipment. Everyone has its own and it's a bunch of euro. While instead the delicate and costly part, which is the optical module can be shared uh, given the fact that it never touches my face and can be also adjusted itself so that the screen can be rotated in order to, um, to encounter the, uh, the, the needs of different physiognomies of these different users. Then let's move on the technology a little bit, if you like. Uh, what you see, uh, it's a simple scheme in which we identify what, what uh, it exists now in the market. Basically, there are two solutions in the augmented reality world. One is the one you see on the top left, where you have a, a partially transparent screen on the top right of your field of view, while the other one is basically a, a, a classic screen, a standard screen, a traditional screen, very small, of course, in the central part of the field of view. Both of these solutions are not compatible with a full deployment in the industry uh, because uh, basically in both cases, you introduce a blind spot. Uh, now, I don't want to become too technical, but giving a blind spot prevents the company to introduce a device for a full deployment, so for a full shift, for example. This because there, there are elements of fatigue, I mean, um, getting tired of the capacity of sight, which changes over time, especially because you have it on one eye, so one eye will not see full uh, field of view, and over time this gives problems. So basically these two kinds of solutions cannot meet the needs of uh, a professional intense use. And this is another answer to that famous question. Well, in our case, we managed to find, we think the right technology because first of all, this, uh, this is a actually transparent screen. It's not like, let's pretend mm, to, to, to take as, a, as, a, as an example, the Google Glass. It's not a prismatic screen. A prism is transparent to the light, but not to the images. So you can see the light coming through, but you cannot recognize the images of the, of the world, I mean. In our case, uh, the screen is totally transparent and doesn't change the perception of reality. In addition, it's in the center, so you don't have to move your eyes in the strange and in natural positions. This means that the comfort, the level of comfort is increased immensely. And finally, the device is compatible uh, with uh, a, a whole shift use and uh, multiple days of use, continuous use, let's say. We have also had an investigation about this more in details. So we have a clinical certifications that states that the use of Visionar, even on long terms, uh, doesn't affect uh, your ability of seeing and doesn't make you tired. So these are very important results. Let's go ahead. We are hardware manufacturers, so we are software agnostic, and I'm also very happy to join this uh, wonderful event with Mauro and JoinPen. They are they are um, partners of ours, so we are happy to to work to work with a lot of partners. Uh, but of course, we identified some use cases because. As you might have already understood, Visionar is not the right tool for any purpose. I give you an example. If you want to equip a designing department, well, Visionar is not the tool for you. Uh, most probably uh, our next speaker will be more <laughs> the right one <laughs> for you. Uh, but we identified three use cases in which Visionar can give 
an added value. One is the one that you are seeing, uh, it's logistics basically. So the idea of giving the operator the freedom of uh, using the hands, not for inputting data or to read something or to scan something, but just to, to pick the, the goods and the item. Uh, another use case, of course, is, uh, is assistant, remote, remote assistance. Mauro already explained a lot how big this uh, use case became lately. We are there, of course, with the uh, advantage compared to other devices that the operator will not be distracted because the, the technology we chose is the less invasive possible. So if the operator is doing something which, is, which might be potentially dangerous, there's no, um, let's say, there's no risk that the digital data will distract him. That's the same reason why all head-up display for professional use, of course, are, have the same features of our screen. So we are talking of monochrome, for example, and monocular. Finally, the third uh, use case is the one that we propose for production fields and uh, maintenance, both local and remote, meaning given instructions. So they can be local instruction or on cloud this, this is the instruction. So uh, let's say dynamic ones. Uh, in any case, uh, the idea is whatever, whatever the operator uses today, which could be a piece of paper or uh, a tablet uh, or uh, the phone or whatever, can be left out of the production field. Now everything is on board. The operator doesn't have to search for instructions. Everything can be, uh, let's say, connected to the specific operation the operator is doing. So they receive the instruction that they need when they need them. Of course, we are talking of IoT. Um, that's it. Uh, just the last, the last sentence is about the operating system. Uh, as I said, we are software agnostic, but we wanted to give our partners the, 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 the largest possibilities of uh, integrating Visionary in existing systems. So as you see, we have all the three main industrial operating system uh, the spreadly used, I would say. So this is, this is it from my side. Uh, I would like just to, while I thank you again once more, uh, I would like just to underline that what you have seen is not, uh, as, as also Mauro said on his side, also on our side is not an experiment or uh, pilots or POC, but we are supplying. Actually, this year is the year in which we are promoting already uh, global solutions of uh, hardware and software with our partners, of course. Uh, but uh, the finished product is uh, on sale already since two years ago. Of course, we worked uh, mostly on the beginning with uh, our ecosystem because we were newbie in the high-tech world. We are glasses manufacturers. Everything you have seen uh, is made in Italy. We are very proud of this. Uh, and the industrial approach allows us to, to follow all the requests of the end user. Everything can be customizable. Our approach is the most open possible, and we believe in the industry this will be the winning car card. Okay, so thanks, Alessio. It's been an amazing talk. If someone has questions for Alessio, please write them in the chat. And since that's a lot of questions for Maura, I hope that will be the same also for Alessio. And now it's the time for the last but not the least speaker, that is Heidor Bravi, the Sales and Partnership Director for Southern Europe and Latin Pico Interactive. Heidor is also a friend of mine, works for Pico, you can see it also on my background, so it's a great company. And he speaks about enterprise VR, ROE, data is the king. So please, uh, Heidor, Talk to us about what you're doing. All right. So thank you. First things first. Thank you, Cecilia. Thank you, Anthony, for having me alongside with Mauro and Alessio. It's going to be a, a good discussion right afterwards. I'm going to I'm going to present something more uh, general in general terms about virtual reality, and especially with ROI. And we're going to discuss a little bit more of what does this letters mean when it comes to developing your virtual reality solution, right? Uh, oops. All right. So first, 
things first. I'm from Brazil. Uh, I am currently sales director at Pico Interactive, based here in Barcelona. Uh, I have started working with virtual reality back in 2015 from Brazil. I have founded a, my company uh, for real estate, uh, virtual reality for use it for uh, real estate. And uh, last year, I have joined uh, Pico Interactive's team here in Europe. And uh, we have several partners, including I, I saw two of them here, Gabriel and uh, Gianpaolo, which are here. Thank you very much for your presence, guys. So uh, let's start with, with some philosophy here. Werner Herzog is a German film director. And uh, when we are talking VR, if you remember a little bit of Alessio's presentation, we were at at the right part of it. So a complete immersion, uh, virtual reality takes you out where you are physically located and transports you to another location, right? So we do not interact directly with the actual environment, but bring you via the headsets and via the complete VR solution, uh, uh, we transport your clients, we transport your employees, we transport we are almost like a, 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 a travel agency here, right? So uh, we can take people from a determined place to go anywhere. So uh, applications for virtual reality restricted by your imaginations. We have a whole world to be virtualized. Not only this one that we know, but also other worlds, right? Uh, why use VR for your business? So we are talking about a new technology that's not that new, but it's becoming even more uh, adapted and uh, uh, easy to be deployed within businesses, right? So these numbers are from PwC and also from eLearning Brothers. We are talking about four times faster learning. We are talking about more confidence in decision-making, uh, contents that provide almost four times more emotional connections and focus, of course, four times more focus. You can, you can imagine it like a, a, a traditional uh, way of transmitting knowledge. So let's say a, a classroom or something like this. Nowadays, when I back when I graduated, I didn't had I didn't have WhatsApp. But you can imagine a teacher nowadays trying to uh, 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 to transmit knowledge and students uh, using their mobile phones or even us while we are at a presentation or something like this. You need to reach out. So focus is really important. And from this level of focus derives the retention rate. So there are some studies that point out an 80% retention rate after one year uh, with virtual reality training compared to 20% after one week for traditional training. So these numbers are quite impressive when it comes to um, uh, being more able to uh, actually uh, work smarter to actually work in a safer environment. Just like Alessio mentioned it, it's really important that companies, industries, businesses in general, uh, deploying both hard skills and soft skills trainments, it's really important to create this culture of safetyness, right, uh, for all the employees. And this is what uh, virtual reality provides. When we are talking about ROI, we're talking about returning, return on investment, right? So it's a performance measure. Use it to evaluate the efficiency of a given investment. We are talking about, uh, uh, I'm just, this is just like the basis. This is from Investopedia. It's uh, widely open for anyone that wants to check it out afterwards. So it's basically what you gain over what was the cost for this game, right? Uh, so it's the liquid thing and the total cost. It's a measure, it's gonna give you this, uh, this ROI calculation is gonna give you a number, it's gonna give you a percentage. Uh, what is important regarding ROI, it's to try to maintain some comparable aspects. So you're gonna be able to compare, all right, what is the ROI of my current 
framework in my company? And what would be the ROI uh, if I think differently, if I put an AR glass in my operation, or if I train my um, my employees with virtual reality, what it would be. And then you can compare numbers, right? This is really important to justify, of course, the investment in innovation inside companies, which is a major topic nowadays. Uh, let's dr drill down a little bit that, um, that formula that I uh, mentioned it before. So let's go for the cost of the investment, right? When we are talking about a virtual reality solution, we are talking about hardware, software, and content, right? So in a nutshell, every virtual reality solution requires investment in a capable hardware that can host the necessary software to deploy contents, uh, immersive uh, contents, of course, with all the services and technical support in order to sustain and to expand uh, your solution throughout your company or throughout your business, uh, whichever it is, right? Um, what about the value? So continuing the, this drill down, the value of investment. Uh, it's important to mention here that there are tangibles and intangibles. Uh, what does this mean? Uh, it means that you can actually measure how much you are saving or how much you are uh, like the productivity or efficiency gains and cost reduction, you can actually measure that. But something really important when it comes to intangibles and we are stepping out of this pandemic. So it's really important. I believe that this kind of discussion, it's being more and more important nowadays about time, about how do you value time? If you have a platform that delivers four times faster uh, trainments or four times faster knowledge transmission in a broader sense. Uh, you get people more emotionally connected. You remember the previous slide? Uh, we are talking about uh, increments and uh, scale economies that this tool provides you, right? Time is the only resource that we cannot buy. So uh, it's really important for us to have it, to, it into account when it comes to the comfort of our of employees, of our clients, of wh whomever is using uh, the is using VR for deployment, right? Uh, and now I would like to discuss some insights. These are this is not the only source of truth here, but uh, it's important to mention it in the way that we can actually reinforce and justify this return on investment, right? So scale, uh, once you have a given content that is scalable, you're gonna reach out more people, you're gonna increase the value of your, the current value of your investment. So having a standardized, content that can be used by multiple persons, let's say, uh, for the travel industry, right? So uh, the same content from, uh, let's say, from Torino, Anthony, uh, you, can, you can present it throughout the world, right? So you can imagine how many people will be able to access the very same content. So the cost of creating this content gets diluted right, by most users, by, by uh, more users that is actually using it. Um, also, it's paramount to have the appropriate service level here. Uh, technical support, not only for turning on the devices, but also to, in an enterprise uh, 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 framework, uh, to upload the APK in the, App Store platform, or to have the quality assurance of it in order to uh, to uh, actually provide this, the the safetyness of use for the final user, so you you'll be able to. All right, I guarantee that the final user is going to be able to check this uh, given content without any further problems. Uh, it's it's going to run perfectly. That's in in this sense. Uh, and most important, we are in 2021, guys. So uh, there are lots of 
market experts that are actually deploying meaningful content out there. When you talk about Italy, we are talking about so many providers, and but not only Italy, we're talking about Spain, we're talking about everywhere in the world because it's like common knowledge, right? When you are a developer, you can reach out to websites, you can reach out to uh, wikis. In general, you can go to GitHubs and you're going to be able to uh, decentralizedly get access to how uh, to develop your virtual reality solution. And these guys will point out to the right hardware. This is really important. One size does not fit all. So uh, depending on the solution that you want to provide for your customer, you will have you will be pointed out to a given headset uh, of choice. Let's say this for gaming, we have this weapon of choice, but it's not a weapon. It's uh, it, it will be the hardware of choice, depending on each uh, solution that you want to provide. All right, and. Um, uh, just uh, to, to remember, data is king. Actually, yes, data is king. Internal data is key to evaluate the value that you deliver, right? From dashboards to reports to uh, any way that you can actually measure the enhancements in productivity, in cost reduction, and, uh, and of course, the level of happiness of your employee to receive a headset and uh, and to actually interact with that experience and again have 80% retention after one year this is really important right uh, some vertical cases I, I had some vertical cases here not necessarily uh, from Pico right uh, this is also available in the internet from uh, Harvard Business Review and uh, also from Hello Ju Hoffman, which is a really nice website. Ford industry, for instance, they implemented this VR manufacturing technology and saw reduction in employee injuries by 70%. So we are talking about 70% less human injuries. Behind the machine, there's someone there, right? There's the employee that's at the production line, and you're gonna, you will, you are providing a, a more safe environment for these people to actually thrive, right? To maintain their jobs, uh, as we all, all are aware, jobs has been a really um, tough matter right after this pandemic. So uh, it's important to have highly productive employees working in a safe environment. For education, for instance, in Honeywell, uh, they, they had compared versus the, the traditional training methods, uh, the retention with VR, and they experienced it, at least for them, 100% uh, more retention and uh, reduced the length 150% of the training. So we're gaining time here. Time flies. We try to keep ourselves uh, up to date. And for medical uh, purposes, 230% uh, boost in the surgeon's performance uh, compared to their counterparts, which were uh, trained uh, with the traditional methods. So these are the real numbers. These are the numbers to be shown for your, for your head of innovation, for uh, your company, for actually receiving being able and uh, being open to receive um, to receive this kind of new innovation right this this kind of uh, uh, this xr platform in a broader sense that will actually deliver value speaking of delivering value uh, let me say some things about the the pico platform uh, in a way we are talking about all-in-one, standalone, easy to clean, safe to use devices. All-in-one, all the buttons are already there, so you don't need, no, you don't necessarily need the controllers to interact with the uh, with the, the, the experiences. Standalone because it doesn't require a tethered connection to a PC-ready VR. You can use a tethered connection depending on your needs, but you can. Um, you can use it without any cables. Easy to clean, 
all of the headset is made with non-absorbent material. So you can wipe out uh, uh, all the, the dirt between users and you provide this uh, uh, safetyness for people to use, right? This safetyness, both for the user and for the data, for the data generated at the experience. Pico does not store any kind of data in their six stuff uh, headsets and uh, deliver this 4K uh, resolution with powerful resources. We're talking about hand tracking for the next model. We are talking about eye tracking, uh, which proved it to be a, a great tool for measuring heat maps, for measuring stress, for measuring a variety of, of things. Uh, they are designed for enterprise. So for with Pico, there's not such a thing of uh, an extra license or an extra business license to operate and to uh, be able to receive all the, the technical support. Uh, we work, we are a global company. We work with worldwide one-year warranty standard uh, at no extra cost. And last but not least, it's an open source platform with full support for the main virtual reality engines. What does this mean? It means that Developers using Unity, Unity XR, Unreal, OpenXR, all of them have the appropriate support to use the platform uh, without necessarily involving Pico, right? We are here to help. We have the support ready to be uh, contacted. But you want, you, if you want, you can deploy your solution directly to your customer, right? Uh, via this open source platform. And that's it, guys. Thank you very much. Here are my contacts. Uh, this QR code leads directly to my LinkedIn. Let's connect and continue talking there. All right. Thank you. Thanks to your haters. So, uh, you can stop the sharing of your screen and we can have a, a little debate all together about uh, AR and VR for the enterprise and the needs of the industry. So uh, since Mauro is, is waiting, uh, he was the first to talk, I want to ask him a question um, to what are in your opinion from your experience, the features that companies and enterprises want more from a AR or VR headset? Can I, can I start? Or, yes, um, you, you are the one that has to start. Yeah, um, we have uh, two different uh, type of customer and um, it depends mm, it depends by the, the typology of the of the of the company it, we have a the digitalized company and the company that they are not the digitalized yet both are interested in uh, remote support for example in in our cases because uh, you can start to use it uh, from the first day without to prepare any kind of digital document and that your return of investment is come from the first day. Digitalized companies can start to use a feature such as object recognition, classification, and the authoring tool because they already have a, a digital documentation. Uh, that's are the, the, the main uh, uh, feature that they are looking for in this moment in uh, from, from our side. And Alessio, also to you, since you work in the smart glasses field that has been pretty popular lately in the enterprise sector. So what are the features that companies are requesting you the most in the hardware and why yours has been appreciated also? Well, thank you for the question, Anthony. Uh, I would, I would give you two answers. One from the point of view of the hardware in our experience and the other one for the software instead. Uh, talking about the, um, the hardware, mainly what, you, what some, most of the companies uh, ask for here is something that could be used uh, from, uh, um, let's say, a large quantity of people, meaning, I try to explain better, uh, People who today are used to, uh, to work with, uh, with PDAs, for example, a PDA is something that they can use uh, personally and then uh, transfer easily to the next operator or worker. 
that's that's the the kind of thing that most companies are asking for, especially in production and in logistics. While instead, from the point of view of the software, I would say that the most common request that I that I receive, especially for the most requested use case, which is of course the remote assistance so far, is the uh, integrability of the solution, namely. Uh, companies don't want to use an additional system with additional credentials and passwords and so on on top of what they have already. So uh, the most effective and winning solutions are the ones who can integrate, for example, in IoT platforms, uh, MindSphere or, or Microsoft Dynamics, whatever, uh, because uh, this helps a lot to, 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 to avoid uh, complications in, in management. Okay, cool. That was very interesting answer. Something that I usually haven't heard from others. So I love this, knowing this. Um, take notes, take Peter, notes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Peter, since uh, there is one question from the chat from Gianpaolo, it asks, what is in your opinion the main limit of VR that avoid mass adoption across the business companies in Italy and all countries of the world? Uh, in my opinion, it's, uh, well, of course, price. Uh, we are still talking about a technology that experienced a decrease in prices, but uh, we still need to, of course, to work constantly on this in order to provide the best possible quality uh, for a price level. So this is number one. And number two, I believe that it's still missing to have, uh, how can I say, innovation ambassadors that are really well connected, for instance, with me, with Mauro, with Alessio, that can actually carry on the flag inside the companies, right? So think, oh, here, look what I have. Look, look what are these guys doing outside here. If we don't step into this technology, we're going to get behind. So it's, it's like, um, it's a sense of not, in a way, it's a sense of urgency that we need to, uh, to give to these people uh, in general, to the decision makers inside companies, the stakeholders, that the technology is now available. It's, it's been available for a while now, but it's already here. For virtual reality, for instance, and I'm gonna be short on this because we already uh, ran out of time, uh, people still have the old version of uh, the S gear, right? Or the, uh, the cardboards, etc. And now we are delivering 4K. So we are delivering uh, transparent lenses. We are, you know, we are delivering some more um, uh, features nowadays that uh, it would be interesting to have people more up to date with the current state of the technology and how it can help in the day-by-day -day operations. Um, another question for Mauro, since before even this event we were speaking about China. Do you see, and um, people are very curious about what happens there, and sometimes it's a bit of black box for people. Uh, do you think that there is difference in handling B2B in XR in the West and in China, or is more or less the same? Well, there is a, there are a huge difference uh, uh, between uh, West and, uh, and China. China is more open um, than West to use smart glasses, for example and they are, uh, but doing a B2B is not that easy there um, because they, the B2B enterprise market is new there. And they know very well the B2B applied to e-commerce, for example. Think about uh, Alibaba is, is, is one of the, the, the biggest company in, in that market. And uh, it is just uh, 20, uh, yeah. 15 years old, okay? And um, so I think that uh, in China, the B2B for industrial is just at the beginning. And, uh, but we, in, in, in the West, we can find uh, several platforms that can uh, help us to spread services uh, like uh, AR, like uh, SAP, Salesforce, and many others. So I think that uh, in this moment, the B2B in the West, uh, 
is uh, is is um, easy to implement. Uh, is uh, easy easy to penetrate as a market. Uh, but uh, I'm not pretty sure that uh, in the next five years uh, it will be the same in in, in China. So I mean, let's see. <laughs> Hopefully you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Alyssa, there is a question from James in the chat that asks, uh, they say that the benefit for adopting AR and VR enterprise is clear. But someone uh, concerns there could be practical barriers like organizational cultural inertia, fear of new technologies among the stakeholders, blah, blah, blah. What is your yeah. opinion, uh, Alyssa? Well, I was just writing, so you will see also my answer there. But uh, I, I'm happy also to to spread the the the, the answer to all uh, all the others here. That's true, and I totally agree with him. This is something we face every day. Uh, it's especially here in Italy. I don't know if uh, the same approach is out of Europe because at the moment we are fully concentrated here, fully focused here in Europe, but. The idea is uh, investors in company in companies uh, have always fear of introducing a, a disruptive technology. That's true. It was it was like this even uh, for PC at the time. Uh, it was always like this. That's why nowadays I, I just wrote we can say it's still 50-50 and we managed to reach already this good result in terms of acceptance by by adopting um, a, a commercial approach, which is very open. We let end user uh, test the technology for a long term for free with no expenses, just to get used to it, just to understand how it works. Because of course, our intention is not to give one device for a small uh, lab, but it's to keep a full department. So before reaching that level, it's important to let them understand that uh, it's just a passage. But we are still 50-50. That's why we join events like this AWE Night Firenze, because uh, what we are investing the most is in awareness. Uh, I go around uh, all the time just to let people understand what is this? How can be useful for you? Try it, understand it, don't be scared by it. So it's a point. It's still early to be, let's say, confident on the topic, but uh, we are moving in the right direction, I think. Wow. I, I hope so. <laughs> also for my job. And <laughs> um, hey, Tor, so. I want to, you know, today on my blog post, I made a lot of fun also about people that complain about the price of enterprise headsets. So to our viewers, can you explain why enterprise headsets are more expensive than consumer ones? So what is, what justifies this price? Uh, basically, uh, it's about the service level, right? So uh, we need to have a structure to host APKs. We need to have a structure to perform the quality assurance of the, of the applications to be used in the platform. Uh, there are some, it's a different cost structure than the consumer side, right? Uh, also the logistics out of it. So we need to ship it for uh, a variety of countries. There are some, some differences, but, uh, it's important if you, for instance, if you compare the, and it's opened for everyone to, to see it. If you compare the costs between the consumer version and the enterprise version of the market leader, let's say you yeah, guys are ready. Right <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, what, what is the main difference there? Exactly the service level, the technical service level that needs to be provided in order to uh, deploy the solutions accordingly with the, uh, the needs of the, uh, uh, of the enterprise. So it's basically this, this is why prices are, are so different and also the different technologies that goes along with them. So uh, for instance, the eye tracking feature or some, uh, some other features that are specifically for enterprises and need to have a different set of hardware in order to be able to be used 
by uh, by the consumers in general. By consumers, no, I, I'm gonna uh, by uh, clients in general, right? For by business clients. Okay, so thanks for clarifying this. So just a final two questions because we're already out of time, but this debate is super interesting. <laughs> so I can start making questions. Mauro, so uh, you worked uh, with many companies implementing many solutions, and I've seen that most of them, uh, also what I see outside is remote assistance, or uh, sometimes a bit of training, blah, blah, blah. But there are there some enterprise use cases of Excel that maybe are not that famous, but actually there is a lot of requests that could come in the next year. So something that, you know, is not so uh, so well known in the communities, but actually is very interesting or at the moment, no. At the moment, uh, mm, the, the first level, as I told, I told you guys, is the, the remote support, but the, the company are really, really interesting in the classification and object detection. And then the third step is the IoT integration. Several companies already ask us uh, or, um, to implement the IoT stream data. Um, meanwhile, you are looking at uh, the process. Meanwhile, you are recognizing object. Uh, uh, but but uh, as, it, as I said, this is... Uh, just for a, uh, a small subset of company already digitalized it, and um, uh, we have to do a step-by-step -step, uh, into the, this, uh, this kind of market. Uh, and, um, but uh, in the last two years, I saw a big, uh, big step forward from uh, the, re the customer request, yes. Okay, so Heito, another question for you is uh, the last question for you. So don't worry, you won't have others. Is, uh, there is a lot of people in the education sector, like universities, et cetera, that would love to have a headset that is like affordable, like the Oculus Quest 2 consumer, but at the same time with uh, enterprise services like the Pico Neo 3. And you know that usually university high school has not big buy, have not big budgets. So, when can we have a product like this? Do you think that maybe in one, two years they could have something with that specific or not? Let's, let, let's grab, I'm gonna grab my crystal ball here in order to answer <laughs> you this. But uh, no, uh, what from, uh, let me tell you from Pico's perspective, right? Uh, as a hardware company, we work with MOQs, minimum order quantities, in order to be able to grant price discounts for our cons consumers, right? Uh, for Specifically for universities, for here in Spain, it's called investigación. Uh, for, for these researchers, we do have a special price for them, right? So we do work with, uh, with a price difference that can match uh, not match, but meet the expectations of creating these labs. Just for you to know, for instance, at the Universidade de Lisboa in Portugal, we are deploying one of one of, a great lab with Joaquim Jorge. Uh, we are talking about uh, over twenty glasses now, and uh, just for this lab. So we made, we could be able to make this special uh, price with the same service level needed to support their initiatives, right? So this is from Pico's perspective. For the future, and uh, without my crystal ball, uh, I believe that it, just like smartphones, the, the path is to have more powerful gadgets within a budget. Right. So in our pockets, we already have smartphones which are more powerful than the computer that took the man to the moon. Right. So uh, with with the coming years, I believe that technology is going to be more accessible for everyone to actually democratize it. And uh, and not only for universities, but for the entire ecosystem. Right. So this is what I personally believe that that's the path that we are going through. I hope so. So Alessio, the last question of the debate is for you is, if someone wants to enter a VR enterprise, a bit of field, so what are a suggestion that you can give to him or to her that wants to enter this field? Oh, 
Nice question. Don't try to make AR glasses anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, uh, I, of course, I'm just joking. The more uh, they are, the better it is, trust me, because this is the way technology uh, grows, of course. I think at the moment, uh, the, um, the bottleneck of, the, of all these systems, both VR and AR, is the infrastructure. If there could be some uh, kind of partner investing in some specific solution for uh, wearable devices uh, on the infrastructure side, so meaning 5G solutions uh, or, or other kind of networks, this would be a big help for this, this specific market. Because at the moment, I think there are a lot of uh, uh, front-end solutions, let's, let's say, but uh, many times, what we the wall we are hitting is that the infrastructure ca cannot support uh, in the proper way these solutions. So I see I see a potential there, a potential business specifically for wearable device. So specifically specifically for AR VR, given uh, the possibility for the worker to use uh, a network dedicated just for that service. So not interfering with the other company needs and the other company networks. Okay, that's great. So with this great piece of advice, uh, the debate is finished and I thank everyone of you for the speaker, Heito, Alessio, Mauro, it's been awesome speaking with you. I thank everyone participating, all the people also had to to, to go away before because of meetings. We're, we're going a bit too out of time, but it was too cool speaking with you. So we invite you to the next uh, night, Florence, that will be next month. And I leave the last word to the amazing Cecilia. So have a nice day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, you all. Yeah. All the best, Thanks everywhere. To the next every night, Florence. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. Thank you all for being here. See you soon at the next Every Night Florence event. Bye bye.